I'm Jeff Yankelo, this is Louis Vol. I work for King Arthur Flower and on the west coast, in the western region. Louis works for um, Stone Barns and Blue Hill, is that the road <coughs> Yeah, Blue Hill and Stone Barns. Blue Hill and Stone Barns in upstate New York. So today we're going to show you how to, uh, there's probably, I, I guess there's people here for two different reasons. Some are here to learn lamination, others are here to learn how to laminate with whole brain. Um, and we're going to show you both, but just to share a little philosophy or how my approach, this was kind of a journey and, and you almost have to forget what you know. It's going to be a very different technique. Because the goal is not to make a croissant with whole wheat flour, the goal is to make a whole grain croissant. Does that make sense? So the difference is I'm not trying to make what a white croissant with whole wheat flour. This is something that's delicious on its own, that has its own characteristics that I'm not going to compare to a white one. I don't want to. Maybe I did. When I first started, I thought that's what the goal was, but it really wasn't. Now I just am doing something that I think is, tastes really good, works really well, that satisfies me. I think, I think food in general, but the croissant is a great example of how I think somehow we've lost focus a little bit on what's important. And, uh, not to offend anyone, but you know, you go on Instagram accounts and you see these like um, what what has become the perfect croissant, like these are crazy layers and open crumb. And if you really want to see what's coming out of bakeries, go to their Yelp account. You know, like, and that's not to say they're not making great stuff. It's just to say the reality is. It's food, like we're making things that are delicious. We're not making, I'm not going to make a croissant of 50% water because I get better lamination, you know? It doesn't taste good to me. So the goal here is to make something that's delicious. And, and through this journey, I learned some things. Like for example, I don't work in a bakery, so everything I've done is at home. All this is by home. All the lamination is by hand, like the, lam the croissant they put on the banner. That's just in my home kitchen, my hand. So it's a very accessible process. Uh, I, I went to work with a chef, he let me use his sheeter and I was making it and I said, yeah, the goal is not to say this is, a, this is good for whole wheat, it's to say this is delicious. And, and he couldn't get over the look of it because it looks a little different. The layering isn't as defined. He said, uh, but Jeff, why don't, I think you should add 20% whole wheat flour and I was like, yeah, that's not, that, that's not the point, you know, like you're missing the whole point. I, I know it would be different with 20% whole wheat flour. Just yesterday while I was here, he knew I was teaching and he's like, I'm so sorry I didn't call you last week. We're still working on it. We're still working on it for you. And I, I think we added 30% whole, whole white flour, and every time we add more, it gets better. And I'm like, <laughs> I, got, I got that part figured out already. Yeah. So if you look at this formula, this is a very unique formula. I'm going to do croissant. Louis is going to do laminated brioche. So we're going to do some swapping around just for the sake of time. This, this formula, I'm going to give you some perspective on it. This is based on a formula I, I learned from James McGuire published in an Art of Eating. I happened to be at King Arthur once when he was testing the recipe and I was pretty fascinated with it. He says he bases on a recipe that Calvell mentions from the 1920s. Oh, the white one, anyway. Uh, a lot less sugar than normal. Um, much softer dough, fewer folds. So James Seary is softer dough, fewer folds, stiffer dough, more folds. Yeah. And I think the reason is a softer dough is more tender. You don't need to make the layers as thin and still have them tender. And nice to eat. So that's where I started. When I saw that for, for James, so to put you in perspective, most people making a stiff white croissant or traditional white croissant are probably at 55 to 62 percent water max, I would guess. Uh, where, but his white one is at 76 percent hydration. This whole grain one is at uh, 97. Yesterday, uh, this dough is over 100, which kind of scares me, but we went by how it feels, you know, just the idea of it. It's like, we're not trying to win a contest. I've just done it so many times, I always mix it by hand. So I kind of know what it feels like, and that's just tried, what I tried to achieve yesterday, and it kept taking more water. So it's, it's a pretty soft dough. Because the idea here is, what do you traditionally, if you've made croissant before, traditionally in principle, you're thinking uh, firm dough, cold butter, and keep it that way. Keep it cold, keep it firm the whole time. This is more about a dough with good strength, it's a soft dough. We're trying to keep the butter plastic, okay? 55 to 60 degrees, a good butter. That maintains its plasticity. So once I get it into that plastic state, I never let it get too cold again. We don't have it. But the thing I really like about it, it moves really quick. It, it doesn't have, um, we never get it too cold, so it proofs a lot faster, so it's really nice in that sense. I've always done small batches, like on your formula, but Louie does them in production, so 
Oh, and a sheeter, right? On a sheeter. So it does work. Like, it's, a, it's more of a challenge, but I can tell you it, it works in production for sure. So, right? Yeah, what's been fun to kind of working, working on this project with, with Jeff is that he's, he's baking at home, but we're baking in, in a bakery. Um, so on a sheeter, production every morning. And so kind of we see how it evolves over, kind of over the course of the last couple of months. And, Seeing how it evolved um, for both of us, kind of in a production environment and also, also at home, which has been, been nice and been exciting for, for me. Too. Yeah, for me too, because it's good to have other people working on it. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are using the same recipe. Uh, uh, similar. similar idea, similar approach, but it's not the same. So he mixes by machine. I mix by machine, or also fresh um, milk flour, uh, and just a little bit different in terms of the amount. So same approach, same, same idea. Yeah, so, I'm, so, so for the dough, in the formula you see I do like an auto lease. I think I put a 20 or 30 minute auto lease on there. It's not a must, but I like it to, so we were talking yesterday, like it's not so much for extensibility because the dough is plenty extensible. It's more to soften the brand a little bit, um, get a little better structure. I'm not going to do that this morning just because, for, for the sake of time. Uh, but basically put your yeast, your sugar, salt, and, and starter in the bowl normally after the auto lease, okay? But I'm going to add it right now. I use a fairly young starter about... Uh, four hours old, I feed it 50% uh, starter, 100% hydration. But you can see how this flour really absorbs. I mean, that's 100% hydration. It's pretty thick. So we're going to use warm milk. I like the dough to be on 75 degrees, so to compensate for the cold milk, I use warm water. <coughs> and basically, I just want to mix it so I can show you how little I do, actually, and what it feels like. Uh, it's very soft. It should feel almost like cement, in a sense. That's how I kind of gauge it going through my fingers, like I like to feel a little muddy. This is a, a hard red spring, Camus's hard red spring. Uh, I think it's 13. Yeah. Sorry, what was the question? The flower is the Camus uh, hard red spring. Right. So oh, and the protein was 13, that's what you yeah, said. Yeah, okay. exactly. So if you don't do an auto lease, you just need to let the dough sit for about five minutes or so. But I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it around. You can feel it. Um, even if your hands aren't dirty, we're not gonna use it. So it's just, just add to the flavor a little bit. So this formula, to give you some ideas too, this has a little bit of sour and yeast. Okay, if you you can do it without yeast. I go up to one percent instant yeast. I'm at 0.8 right now. Uh, the sugar is nine percent in this formula. I've gone as low as seven. You highlight more, more, more of the grain. Most croissants are probably around 11. I've gone as high as 12 on this. Um, tastes pretty good too. I try to go lower sugar, highlight the grain instead. Why do you don't put sugar? You don't put sugar, it won't brown very nicely and it tastes very savory, so to speak. So it's, uh, it's quite a departure from the traditional flavor if you don't, if you don't have the sugar. So um, I've tried it with um, kind of a combination sugar honey to, to reduce the sugar and also um, a malt syrup as well. So you can kind of uh, play around with other sweeteners as well. And you get, I've gotten really yeah, nice, nice yeah. deep flavors and good results with it. So then, um, and the, the, the dough is actually, the, the yeast is not that much, like 0.8% yeast from a bread perspective sounds like a lot. From a croissant, the dough with sugar, it's not that much. It's actually less than typical, but the dough seems to move very fast and be very active because it's very wet. You know, it's whole grain, but it's also very soft. You know, so without a lot of sugar, with the high hydration, it's going to move uh, fairly, fairly quickly. So I'm going to get a dough from the fridge.